Let's talk for just a minute about the DC power timers. And these are timers that use DC batteries, usually 9 volt batteries, to power a valve. There are two categories of these DC battery timers, and the first one I want to talk about is the kind that's commonly found in the big box gardening stores, you know, in the sections in Lowe's or Home Depot. And you'll find these are made by a number of different manufacturers, and it's the type that mounts to an external faucet, also called a hose bib. And these use garden hose threads to attach to it and also to come from it. So on the top of the timer, you're going to have an FHT thread, and that's female hose thread, and that threads up onto your hose bib. And then the bottom threading is a MHT, male hose thread, so that you can attach a garden hose to it and run it out into your garden or your flower bed and use like a little sprinkler there and run it off of an external faucet. These are great in a pinch if you just have a little tiny area to irrigate, but I would caution against using these style of timers to run a larger operation. I wouldn't say that they're flimsy, they're just not as durable as the professional grade gear that we normally install in an irrigation system. A lot of times what I'll see is with sprinklers that are attached to garden hoses, I've observed landscapers tugging on the hoses. And I've noticed that a lot of times when they do that, they break the fittings off on these style of timers. So let's talk about the other kind. This is a professional grade part, and we see these a lot out in the islands in the middle of a highway or a parking lot where it's possible that you have water but no electricity or no real place to hook up a 24 volt timer. So this particular model here is an older version of a hunter's timer. Um, and if you notice here, we've got two different colored leads. That means that it's polarized. When you deal with DC, it's always polarized. AC, not necessarily so. Usually you'll see a red and black. So these also have to be used in conjunction with a DC latching solenoid. Now I've mentioned this a couple of times before, but it can be very confusing if you've never dealt with it before. So what happens with these timers, because it doesn't have a constant supply of energy coming from a, an outlet, electrical outlet, it only has batteries, we want to conserve that battery life as best we can. So what this timer does is when it's time for that particular zone to open, it sends a single pulse to that solenoid, and it's a latching solenoid. That means a one pulse latches it open, and then it stays open until the timer decides it's time to close it, and then it sends another pulse down the line to close that solenoid. So that's what we call a DC latching solenoid. And when you're troubleshooting these kind of systems, you're going to need to take a little bit different tact, whereas an AC timer is continually sending voltage out when that zone is supposed to be running, these don't do that. So we have to be prepared for the open signal. So you can either use an analog multimeter and just watch for the pulse of the needle when it turns it on. Or if you have a digital multimeter, you can set it to record the peak value and then you'll see what it is when it opens up. And then of course you have to do the same to watch it close. But it's just a little bit different tactic in troubleshooting these type of timers. Now I've seen a lot of situations to where on a commercial property you get so far away from the timer and then somebody decides they want to add a zone on. So if you have water and no electricity, this is a good professional solution to that problem. So I wouldn't hesitate on using these. I mean, if at all possible and you have a system that's wired up to a 24 volt timer, I would try to use that timer anywhere that you can. But like I said, sometimes it isn't cost efficient to run wires back to the timers. And so a lot of times we'll use these DC latching timers to put an additional zone out if it's so far away. Because a lot of times once a commercial property gets installed and the parking lots go in or the driveways and walkways, and some of the smaller walkways and driveways are easy enough to get under, but if you're in a pinch and you really need to put a zone out somewhere where you have some water and no electricity, this is a fine option for it.